Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about light and its two basic phenomena reflection and refraction. So let's get started. There was a Greek scientist. His name was Plato. He gave out a conclusion that we humans are able to see things because we shoot light rays from our own eyes and they fall on the objects and that is why we are able to see different kinds of things. Isn't that funny? Lo and behold, this funny thought of that Greek scientist came out to be somewhat true. We humans were found to actually glow. Yes, to actually emit a blue colored radiation light, but it was of extremely low intensity because of which we are not able to see it. It is not visible to the naked eyes. Yes, me and you, both of us are glowing right now. And that phenomena is called bioluminescence. The same phenomena was found in oceans, in some aquatic and phytoplanktons. They emit a glittery blue colored light in darkness. You can also see an image of a firefly, which we call Jugnu. In the tail of this firefly, there is a chemical reaction going on, which also causes it to emit a radiation, a light called bioluminescence. Also, there is a picture of a light bulb. Can you tell me when was the last time you saw this bulb anywhere in your house or around? These bulbs are not used these days. You know why? Because they only use 10% of the total energy which they take to give out light. Rest 90% they emit out as waste heat energy. That is a very low efficient system. So they have been now replaced by LEDs which have very high efficiency. So let's get started with the course contents. For the contents we have what is light, its reflection phenomena, its laws and why do we see things. Then we move to refraction and refractive index and after that we'll cover the types of mirror, types of lenses and their applications. Why do we see things? What is light? Why do we see things? You can see there is an image on the right top corner of your screen. A light bulb is throwing huge amount of light rays all around and the rays are going on a specific object and that object is bouncing back those light rays in all the different directions. In those directions, they come to our eyes, the human eye, because of which we are able to see things. In basic understanding, you can understand this is the reason we are able to see things. And how human eye functions will be covered in the next chapter. So what is light? As we know that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but it changes form from one form to another. One of those forms is light. Light is a form of energy and we have also come to know that it travels in straight line. Light also need not require any kind of medium to travel. That means it can also travel in vacuum. And it has been found that light has speed of 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second, which is too much. And it is the fastest entity known to us. Please note that this speed of light has been calculated in vacuum or approximately same in air. Light gives two basic phenomena depending upon the type of medium on which it is falling. It reflects or refracts. We will study about them. Mirrors and lenses are two tools which we have made to broadly use the properties of light for our own needs. Reflection of light. Basically, reflection can be understood and visualized by throwing a ball on a floor and it gets deflected or bounced back to some other direction. So reflection is the phenomena where when an incident ray, a light falls on a base object which is opaque. Opaque means it will not absorb light too much. It will not transmit it to the other side. It will bounce back the light ray. It will reflect it. So the incident ray when falls on an object, it goes reflected to become a reflected ray. And you can see a dotted normal line that is the perpendicular line to the base blue plane. So this phenomena has been governed by two basic laws called the laws of reflection. The first law says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. You can see theta i and theta r are the two angles which these rays are making with the normal line. So these two angles will always be equal in case of a smooth surface on which the light is being reflected. The second law says the incident ray, the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie on the same plane. This is the point of incidence. 
This is the normal at this point, incident ray and reflected ray. As you can see in this diagram, we have made a white plane. This is the plane which we are talking about in the second law. All these three will always lie on same plane. It will not come out of this plane. There are two examples of smooth and rough surface. Do you think a page of a paper is a rough surface? Yes, it is. We might not see it right now, but when we go to microscopic level, we will see it is actually rough. So when light rays reflect from rough surface, they go away in different angles. But in the case of a very smooth surface, for example, mirror, they just get reflected in one specific angle. So this is the difference between a smooth surface and a rough surface in reflection. Now, plane and spherical mirrors have been found to be highly reflecting surfaces with the help of which we form different kinds of images to use them for different applications. Plane mirrors give virtual and erect images of size same as the object, but laterally inverted. And spherical mirrors can give real and virtual images. So let us talk about lateral inversion first. Lateral inversion. Have you seen an ambulance on which the English written is kind of very different from the normally which we write? You know why they write that? Because when this written thing is seen on our own car from a rear view mirror, we'll be able to read it properly. That means that the mirror is literally inversing the image which it is making. Your right hand in front of the mirror will look like a left hand. That is called the lateral inversion phenomena in a plane mirror. Now there have been two words mentioned, virtual and real images. Let us see what they are. If a light ray is falling on the mirror, there may be two kinds of images forming. One is the real image and second is the virtual image. I'll give you an example. When you stand in front of a mirror, you see your own image behind the mirror, inside the mirror of same size. But are you able to reflect or project that image on a screen? No, you can only virtually see that you cannot project it on a screen. So that is a virtual image. But all those images which can be projected on screen are called real images. So this is the basic difference between real and virtual image. Now we move to refraction of light. Have you seen or ever seen this phenomena where you dip a pencil in a glass full of water and it gets displaced. The pencil is not actually getting broken or bending. It is the light which bends because of which the pencil is being displaced. You can see here a light ray is being thrown to a glass. It goes into the glass. It changes its directions and then comes back to the same parallel direction. These two phenomena are because of the bending of light ray when it changes medium. In this example, from air to glass. In this example, from air to Sorry, in this example, from air to water, in this example, from air to glass. So this is the bending of light when it changes medium. Laws. So this property of light, this phenomena of light, which it shows is called refraction. It is governed by two main laws, the incident ray and refracted ray and normal. Those three rays, which we studied in reflection are same over here. They all lie on the same plane. This law is common in both reflection and refraction. And the second is Snell's law. Snell's law says that the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence and the sine of angle of refraction is constant, but a condition. This ratio will remain constant for a given color of light and for a specific pair of mediums. Air or water if fixed for a red color light, then we will see all the angle of incidences and all the angle of refraction and they all will give same ratio, constant. Now this ratio has been named as refractive index. And what is actually refractive index? It is simply the speed of light in the first medium to the speed of light in second medium. And it is given by symbol N21 over here. It is read as refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium. Refractive index is always a relative term. It is in relation with the first and the second medium in pair. So let's move further. Here is an example, we are seeing a boundary, a black colored boundary. This boundary is the interface boundary of medium 1 and medium 2, in which the speed of light is n1 and n2. So in example 1, you will see that the light is going from a denser medium to a rarer medium. In this case, the, ref the incident ray gets away from the normal when refracted. This is because the speed of light in denser medium is low. 
but when it goes to a rarer medium its speeds become high and it goes to, away from the normal in case 2 when the light goes from rare to denser medium the speed of light is high in rarer medium but when it goes to denser medium its speed decreases because of which it comes towards the normal so this is what happens in refraction now let me tell you a little about the denser and the rarer medium which we are talking about this density is not what there is in solids it is the optical density which we are talking about right now what is optical density optical density is the hindrances which are created in front of light when it goes in a medium the particles on which light is falling inside those mediums if it is a solid it will have a lot to refract through and to scatter which will come in front of it but in different different mediums it is different like for air it is different and for oils it is different so that is what we are talking about over here dense and rare the optical density now you have seen a plane mirror in your homes but apart from that there are different kinds of mirrors and lenses being used you know your eyes also have a lens they are that are the convex lens and also we use concave lens there are two types of lenses which we use a difference between a mirror and a lens is that a mirror gives a virtual image and it gives the image behind the mirror in a convex lens you can diverge or converge the rays to a fixed specific point this is your eye lens you can see it is focusing all the rays towards this single point f2 so the mirrors and lens are basically classified as these two major classifications for the curved mirrors it is concave and convex which converge or diverge the light and for the lenses convex and concave lens which also converge and diverge the light so let's move to the basic applications these are all the simple things which you have seen around you in your home in your tv channels which use mirrors and lenses you can see this is the contact lens of an eye which people use in space in alternative of spectacles the specs which we use these two have the lenses which are able to improve our eyesight for the people who have weak eyesight all the cameras you are seeing me right now i am able to see these images right now because of all these lenses and cameras being used the most important application in the automobile industry without which many accident might have been there the rear view image mirror because of which we are able to see which vehicle is behind us the telescope the telescope which helps us to see all the different celestial bodies to magnify the far off things near our eyes you can see different different applications in your home and in automobile industry in travel so these are the basic applications so in the end i'd just like to say light is a very important entity which we humans have exploited we are exploiting it and we are using it to our own benefit light energy is which gives us clarity and darkness is also defined as the absence of light but it is also because of light so there is hope in darkness also thank you